Hello there, my lovely darklings. It's your fave witch, Jamila Anahata, back with another video. I am a holistic lifestyle coach and tarot reader who wishes to empower your divinity in order for you to elevate from your darkness. If that is of any interest to you, you can visit me at thesoulvegainista.com to check out my services. And today I want to talk about how physical health is wealth. And as a holistic lifestyle coach, I care about all modalities and all components of total health and wellness. You know, the, the sexual, the financial, the social, the environmental, and of course the mental, spiritual, and other things as well. But something that a lot of people do not talk about lately, or they talk about too much, it's, it's either side of the spectrum. We either care about health too, too much, where we're on the orthorexic side, you know, making sure that everything we eat is clean and pure and going way too far on that side of the spectrum. Or we don't care about health enough, we take it for granted. We think that health is something that is just bound to get better despite our bad habits. And on the other side of the spectrum where we don't care about health enough, we take it for granted. We feel that because we feel okay now and things are seemingly well now, that there is no consequences for our actions, especially in the long term. So of course it's okay to be lax in certain situations we want to enjoy what we do we want to enjoy what we eat and consume however being on that side of the spectrum is going to hurt us more than help us so it's very important that we do not go on either side of that spectrum if we want to consider wellness a spectrum or our perspective on wellness or physical wellness because once again there are people who take it way too seriously they're not enjoying anything it's really to their detriment because after a while, it could hurt you. It could cause certain mental illnesses due to trying to be so much so in control. And on the other side of the spectrum, that can cause mental and physical illnesses because we need our body to properly function in order for us to survive on this planet. And when I say that physical health is well, I mean it. Even if you have a gajillion dollars and 50 cents, it does not matter if you do not have your body functioning properly. And we think that health means being thin, being attractive, being able to do certain physical activities with perfection or whatever. A lot of what we've been conditioned to believe about health is usually aesthetic, usually aesthetically pleasing, but that is absolutely not true. No matter what you look like, no matter what your background is, and no matter what you believe about health, the goal is for your physical body, your temple, your vessel, for divine to be channeled through you. It's for it to properly function. You want to make sure that your digestion's on point. You want to make sure that your heart health is on point. You want to make sure that your activity level is on point, that you're eating foods that your body recognizes that can aid in the functionality of your bodily systems. And I'm just here to tell you that if you are not taking care of your health and wellness, there is a problem, especially your physical health and wellness. Because without your body, without the wellness of your body, you cannot focus on your mental health really well. Because how your body functions affects all components and all modalities of holistic wellness. Without your physical body, how can you tend to your mental wellness? Without your physical body, how can you tend to your spiritual wellness? Without your physical body, how can you even go out and be social? How can you tend to your environment? How can you talk to your family and friends? How can you fulfill your passions and desires? How can you even experience sexuality or create habits to benefit your finances? All those things come together beautifully with your physical vessel. And of course, you can't have one thing without the other, without your mental wellness. How can you even focus on your physical body and without your spiritual wellness it's going to be not necessarily difficult but you're not going to be very in tune with your sexual wellness so all of it does matter there's not really a concern with the order in which you do things however your physical body is the number one way you can tend to any of those things you can water the gardens of all components of wellness so what i mean by this is of course we care about grooming here. I love to groom. I love to make sure that I am focusing on my goals when it comes to eating well and exercising and all those types of things. 
But I learned the hard way that if you do not tend to your physical health and wellness, you have nothing. You have nothing. Once again, you can be a trillionaire. You can have it all. You can have the career. You can have the house, the car, the friends, the family. But if you have ailments within your body that are creating roadblocks to your own personal development and success, you have nothing. And you know that's true. And we do not take our health seriously enough. Once again, I'm not generalizing because there are some people, especially when it comes to other holistic type people, or other people who make sure that they're making their health and wellness a priority. And of course, no one owes anyone health or wellness. You can do what you feel. You can do whatever you want to with your body. It is your body, your choice. And I completely respect that. However, we know deep in our spirit, we know because our guides, our angels, our ascended masters, divine itself tells us every day to create better habits with our physical health. And that comes through diseases, through illnesses, through ailments. The chronic pain, the symptoms, all those types of things that we experience are our bodies telling us that something's wrong. Sometimes we take pills to numb the pain, to limit the symptoms themselves. And although that might be great for you because it temporarily gives you relief, it alleviates a lot of discomfort. No judgment at all. Do what you need to do. However, we don't want to tell our body to shut up with the painkillers, with things that just put a band-aid over the actual issue, the wound, the gaping wound that we choose to put a little tiny band-aid, a little strip over it. We cannot do that. We cannot tell our bodies to shut up, divine, the universe, God, whatever you may call it, and our bodies itself are trying to tell us something. They're just a manifestation of the things that we've been lacking in our physical health. And that is not to blame us for our situation. Sometimes we have genetic problems. Sometimes there are just things out of our control that we can't foresee. However, we know what we can control and we choose not to control it. And we choose not to do anything about it because it is very convenient to just, once again, slap a bandaid on it, on the gaping wound and just go about our day. And once again, I'm completely empathetic and understanding of the fact that we have to survive on this planet. We have to do what we gotta do in order to survive. We are here to thrive in this space. And as much as we are going to survive as much as we can, because we are still human animals and we have to do what we gotta do, we are here to live our best lives. We are here to live a life of passion, bliss, ecstasy, and wonder and we can't experience all the abundance that the world has to offer us that the universe has to offer us without our physical bodies so we must take it seriously we cannot tell our bodies to shut up with painkillers and anything that just alleviates symptoms we need to attack the root we need to get to the root of why illnesses ailments and diseases are manifesting in our bodies and even though some things may be out of our control and we need medical assistance or medication, there is such a need for that and I'm never going to deny that. However, what I mean by attacking the root is figuring out what we can do with our physical health to alleviate those symptoms. And a lot of the time, it's what we consume. It is our eating habits. It is who we surround ourselves with. It is our physical activity levels. It is our routines, our daily routines. It is also our grooming, our hygiene. So many components go into our physical health, things that we do not focus on because in the world today and really in the world in general, we're not unique to this. We've always been set back by our fears, our anxieties, our sadness, our busyness. All, all those things really do distract us. They're very distracting and I completely understand that. However, we need to take control of our physical health and wellness today. 
we have been neglecting it for way too long out of convenience. We've been taking it for granted because we feel okay now, because we can take a pill to alleviate certain symptoms. How you feel today is not how you're going to feel tomorrow. But your habits today can contribute to your health and wellness tomorrow. So choose better habits right now that can make your health and wellness amazing in the long term. And what I mean by we do not take our physical health seriously and that we take it for granted and why we do not believe that health is wealth, we say that, but we don't do anything about it. We say that, but then we eat a double cheeseburger and fries afterwards. No judgment, once again, no shame. I do not like to shame anyone. This is just to remind you that certain habits that we built up along the way are not helping us. And we all know that. And once again, we know that we do not feel well, yet we do not rest. We do not get our six to nine hours of sleep. We know that we're out of breath when we walk up a flight of stairs, but we do not take 30 minutes out of the day, 10 to 30 minutes out of the day, to do some sort of physical movement. It doesn't have to be the gym. It can be dancing, it can be gardening, it can be taking a walk. Whatever is accessible to us or what comes to us or what makes us feel good, we can go towards that. Make it work for you, make it fun, make it easy. And I understand that it won't be easy for everybody, but if you do not prioritize your health and wellness, your physical health and wellness at whatever level of consciousness, level of status you are in the world, what do you have? What do you have? So please take it seriously. I mean it when I say that I don't believe that we do. So what will it take? What will it take for you to take your physical health in your hands? What will it take to make your wellness, your physical wellness and really all wellness a top priority for you? Because having your desires, having things manifest for you being your desired version, what does it mean if you're feeling sick every five seconds? If you have to go to the hospital every five seconds? If you know that you're just not feeling well and you're just drudging through life, going through life feeling miserable physically, you can't even enjoy anything anymore. And I also want to leave off this video. This is really just a rant in a lot of ways because how you Tend to your physical health is up to you. You already know what to do. There are so many videos online, so many articles online, so many motivational speeches online to tell you how to get your physical health in check. You know what to do. You know you've been putting off the eating habits, eating your fruits and your vegetables or whatever feels good for you, whatever is accessible to you. You know that you probably should be doing some movement regardless of your busy schedule. You know that you probably shouldn't be watching that TV show or the news channel because it makes you feel stressed out and sends your body into fight or flight or freeze mode. You know exactly what to do. Why aren't you doing it? And why wait? Do what you can now, even if it's small little habits, even when you're not where you want to be. Start today and choose wisely because only you know what will make you start. Only you know what will have you begin this journey for you. And I will tell you, I will leave out this video with my story for that. How I overcame a lifestyle that was a huge detriment to my physical health. And that goes really big back into my vegan story. But I will say that I used to be a binge eater. I used to have binge eating disorder and I am so grateful that I overcame it with holistic living. And I will say that it started as young as possibly nine or 10 years old. My parents were full-time workers. We did not have a lot of money. My, even though my dad did cook a lot and my mom cooked as well, it was anything that they were able to make in a few minutes because they were really busy. And we had a lot of fast food. 
We were raised in a very low income, blue collar area where fast food was in abundance. Cheap food was in abundance food that looked pretty, things that were on commercials and that were heavily advertised to, work, to us, we ate in abundance. And not only did I eat those foods, I ate them in large quantities. And this is not something that is unheard of in my family. Pretty much most people, possibly on both sides of my family, ate large quantities of food and also not the best foods. So it was also my environment that made me feel like it was okay to do this. So I would eat, 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 shove my face full of burgers, fries, tenders and fries, pizza and fries. That was basically what I ate. I would have snacks around the house. I had a bunch of, of soda. I would drink large amounts of orange soda. I remember when I was in fourth grade and I began getting into cartoons and sitcoms, which really got me into comedy and being a blurred when it comes to cartoons, I would come right home, I would fill up a huge water bottle, probably like a 25 ounce water bottle full of orange soda. I would have a large bag of Doritos, maybe a Pringles can, sour cream and onion. <laughs> and I would go up into my room and I would watch sitcoms for about two hours. I would watch Seinfeld, The Simpsons. I would watch King of the Hill. I would watch that 70s show. I believe that was on at the time. But I would just be in my room, laying on my stomach, staring at a TV screen for about two to three hours which, with a bunch of snacks on hand. Not good for a nine-year-old. And that was a pattern that I created throughout my adolescence. I ate in abundance, I ate horrible foods in abundance, and it it showed up very well. I was close to 200 pounds at 5'1", 5'2", I'm 5'2 and a half now. I can't imagine how tall I was by the time I was in sixth grade. So by the time I was 12 in sixth grade, I was 183 pounds and I was probably 5'1". And I remember the moment that I was in gym class in sixth grade and we had to weigh ourselves for whatever reason. And I was on the scale and the gym teacher told me my weight. And I couldn't help but ball out crying. And this had nothing to do with my body image. This had everything to do with me not wanting to go on the same path as my family members who have gone up in weight, who have binge ate, who had really bad eating habits and it made their health decline. It made their wellness decline. It made their self-image and self-esteem decline. And I did not want that for myself, even at 12 years old. And I'm so glad I was conscious at the time that I wanted to make a change. I didn't really make a change until years later. Luckily, my parents got me into a program that helped me understand how to eat better and do physical activity and to even just drink water something as simple as drinking water that really helped and it wasn't until my vegan journey that i really understood my eating habits i understood that i was eating too much i understood that i was eating a lot of the wrong things i understood that i was eating my feelings something that i did not realize i did i just thought that i loved food and even to this day, I do consider myself a foodie. I always tell people I, I love going to restaurants. I love to make my own food. I just love delicious food, as I'm sure most people do. However, I didn't realize until very recently that I was eating my feelings. And I'm sure I'm not the only one out there that I'm not just a binge eater for binge eating's sake. I didn't just like brownie sundaes and large pizzas all to myself just because I was a foodie. I was hiding something. I was escaping from something. I wanted to feel better. And unfortunately at the time, or something that I realized about myself, is that food was my drug. Food was my vice. And even though I still eat very delicious food, I just choose to make it myself. I like to know what's in my food. I like to know that it's made with love. I like to know that it is going to be health promoting and nutritious. I like to know that I'm not having too much oil, salt, or anything that will make my blood pressure rise or any type of function in my body be in disharmony. So 
it's so important to understand and to be conscious, aware, mindful, and present with our consumption habits. Because everything that we consume, not even just our food, we think that physical health is just about our food. It is not. And no matter what you eat, no matter what diet you, you or lifestyle you partake in, it matters what we eat. It absolutely does matter. It matters when we move. Our body likes to move. We are very active people. Humans are very active. Animals are active. Of course, there are some animals that don't really have to move that much. Yeah, but humans are very active. We must move. Humans need hygiene. Hygiene and grooming, it's not just something that is for feminine people or feminine aligned folks or women or just to look pretty or look clean or anything like that. Hygiene and grooming is what keeps us healthy. It's what keeps us away from certain illnesses. Think about it. What makes humans stay alive so much after, you know, centuries and centuries of survival, we die much older now because of our hygiene, because we can wash our hands, because we can shower, because we can wash our hair, because we can cleanse things off of our bodies that are not supposed to be there so that we can prevent any type of buildup or any type of accumulation of things that are not good for our skin on the outside or just anything on the inside. So I'm saying that we say health is wealth, but do we truly believe it? Do we know our habits? Are we aware of our habits that keep us stuck, miserable, unhealthy, in pain, in disease? What is our body trying to tell us with the chronic symptoms that we have? And once again, I'm not here to shame anyone or judge anyone. I want people to feel well. The journey that I went on, the journey that I still am on, I feel great. I feel well. And I want this for other people. I want this for you. I want this for the world. Regardless of what socioeconomic status they belong in, what background they belong to, what culture they belong to, I don't care. I want you to feel well because you are supposed to feel well. That's why feeling well, having health and wellness, and being happy feels so good. Because we're supposed to be happy, healthy, and thriving. What is keeping you from that? Whatever your body is telling you, listen to it. It is trying to get you to the root of the problem. And a lot of the times, the root of the problem is not the disease itself. It's how we're handling our lives how we're handling our emotions, how we're handling our traumas, our fears, our beliefs. Because it really does come back to what we believe, what we believe to be true. And as much as there are genetic disorders, and I'm not going to discredit that, and we have to work with medical professionals for that, but do what you can control to make yourself feel well in the meantime. It is available to us at all times. We don't have to pay for anything. We don't have to have a service for many things to make sure that we are feeling healthy and well. So please take it seriously. Your life depends on it. Your development depends on it. Your spiritual wellness, your physical wellness, your mental wellness, your financial wellness, your sexual wellness, all of it, all of it depends on the harmony that is created through your physical health. You can't do anything. You can't enjoy anything. You can't embark on anything without your body being in perfect harmony. And hey, there are going to be people whose body won't possibly be in perfect harmony. But I believe that there is always something that we can do, always something that we can believe, because everything is possible. Everything is possible. And once you believe it, you will receive it. So yes, this was more of a rant today. My thoughts were all over the place. I just felt so compelled, so channeled, so urged to give this message today because I do see people who take their health way too seriously and they're hurting from that. That's, that's another group. But on the, the other side of the spectrum, I see it more so. There are so many people 
who feel that health is just a joke. We can eat whatever we want. We can be as sedentary as we want. We can be as stressed out as we want. We can consume all the things that cause fear and disharmony and anger within us as much as we want. We can be around the same types of people that we know we do not gel with all we want. We can create or be in environments that make us feel stressed out and once again angry all we want to. No. If you're not feeling great, if you're not feeling well, it is a sign from divine, it is a sign from your body that something needs to change and it starts with you choose wisely so now we've reached the end of this video thank you so much for watching be sure to give this video a like subscribe for more content leave a comment down below and visit my website at thesoulfulveganista.com to check out my services much love and until next time my lovely darklings bye bye